Uh, I might mention that uh, while the Methodist Church of Kenya is the venue by which this food and AIDS ministry goes on, the people that are served, it's a community-based program. So everyone is served without discrimination, regardless of their religion or their uh, background or their uh, tribe or sexual orientation or whatever. Everyone is welcome uh, and we reach out to the poorest of the poor and we are grateful for all the community partners that are served there. Uh, now I'd like to present to you my esteemed colleague and friend, Marla Petrini, who has served as vice chair of the board over the years and is now an honorary member of the board of directors of the center. Marla, welcome. Thank you, Don. I am so proud of my nearly 15 year association with the Center for Health and Hope. It truly seems a mad world, as Kelly sang earlier. What descriptors do you use for this mad world, the time of COVID and quarantine? Difficult, lonely, boring, hair pulling, especially if you have children remote learning from home every day. But what if the descriptors which fit your experience were hungry, sick, hopeless? This pandemic has hit the Kenyan AIDS orphans particularly hard. One of the 361 orphans supported by the center, Pauline Carrigo, age 17, died of the coronavirus. Sadly, there are hundreds of orphans who are waiting on a list to take her place in the program that we call HOPE, helping orphans by providing essentials. And you've heard what that program provides this morning through our other speakers. These children don't have the luxury of continuing school from home. No Wi-Fi connection, no computers. Many family breadwinners have lost their jobs. These children and their families are more food insecure than ever. And as you've also heard this morning, many of them are HIV positive because they were born to mothers who are HIV positive. And they need sufficient and nutritious food in order to be able to take their antiretroviral medications. There have been several HIV deaths in this community over the last several months. A grandmother or older relative, as happened in Glory's case that you heard, who's taken in an orphan child, because they are older, they're in a vulnerable COVID demographic. And how do you socially distance from an infected family member when the entire family is living in a space that's smaller than the average American garage? These children need our help now more than ever. I know that some of you have been particularly financially affected by COVID and you won't be able to give today. And to you, we say thank you for your continued involvement in the center and being with us this morning. But to others of you who can give, we need your gift right now. I know you have your credit cards out and ready. You can see on your screen the three ways that you can give by texting the amount you wish to donate to 844-412-056 and then following the prompts via credit card on our website, centerforhealthandhope.org or by mail to 7185 South Niagara Circle, Centennial, Colorado, 80112. As Dawn indicated earlier, we have a $3,000 matching grant from a very generous couple, wonderful friends of mine and the center. Won't you give now so that $6,000 is raised today? Maybe you've had a vacation refund or a trip that was canceled like Kelly and me, who weren't able to take our trip to Kenya this last summer to visit our Hope Orphans. I know that I'm saving a lot just by not going out to eat at restaurants. How much would you spend for four people to eat at a nice restaurant for just 
one meal. $200 provides essentials to an orphan for one year. I don't say this to make you feel guilty for spending money on yourselves. You deserve it. But so do these orphans. We are all humans struggling for humanity. Please give whatever you can, even if it's less than $200. Anything and everything helps. Thank you in advance for your generosity and your heart. Kindness is everything.